Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Tom Mizzy, watching my channel, Mizzy14, and I'm here doing a review of Insecure Season 3, Episode 4, Fresh Like. Another good episode, and this the title just like it. This is just a whole fresh new start, whole fresh new like of uh, things in their lives, and it's all over. So Issa was rapping on her to herself in the mirror, called Mirror Bitch, whatever the, her map it was, and it, it was cute, like she normally do. And then she get a knock on the door. Daniel's at the door, and Daniel decided to drop off her last little stuff from his house. Because, you know, Issa got her own place now. She a property manager, and she get an apartment with the deal of the job. And so she moved in, and it was an awkwardness between Daniel and Issa. It was like, you know, they, how Issa still feel about Daniel and stuff. So she said, I appreciate everything you do. He said, you don't have to talk about that. So it was a silence and stare. I said, oh, okay. And he hugged her and walked out. And when Mr. He walking out, he saw Molly. And Molly said, oh, you leaving out? He said, yeah. And she said, oh, bye, Daniel. And then she went in the side of the house, gave Issa her boxes as well, a lot of her dishes, <laughs> cups and glasses broken and shit. And um, Molly gave her some gifts, like some air mattresses, cushion and then it was um a plant and some um, Hennessy that she could start her bar and she was looking at the thing she said Issa you cold enough to new uh, old stuff if you're gonna start a fresh start you need to throw a lot of your old stuff away which is kind of true when you go somewhere and you want a fresh start some old things you can't keep around all the time so you just throw it away so but it's sometimes hard to throw mementos out like you need to it's like cherishing the moment. Like he's like, why well, need to throw this out? It was just so valuable to me. But sometimes you just throw away the old and keep the new, if it's reasonable to throw it away. So it was like some books, some CDs, some um, bath products, everything that she had. Mostly she was throwing away her rap book. So she saw her rap book and she was like, damn. She was reminiscing about her rap book and she had a journal, and she still does this because she still raps here and there. But um, yeah, she was thinking at that. Now we came to Molly. Molly was like she said she feel like she's in the bottom and she feel like she um, left all behind and she's not getting the recognition that she needed at the job and stuff. So she's trying to be up there and Issa said just relax girl you just started that job you gonna get through it just start from here and just work your way up. You start a new job it's not you're not expected to be on the top right away. Well, Molly went that fast lane. She said, y'all yeah, just left my old job. I just want to this fast, do the quickness, rise to the top. And so Molly was at a meeting with the thing, the board meeting with the black class. And some things were said and talked about. Molly was trying to not to interject, but when she tried to interject with something, somebody else was saying the answers. And she didn't say that much, and then the boss said, Molly, did you want to say something? She just said the same thing that one of the other ladies said, so it's good. And then there was something else going on, and then this guy named Tori that sitting next to her kept interjecting and kept interrupting her and trying to not finish her sentence. So, you know, this is like, that can get me pissed off. And I'm trying to say something, listen and wait for your turn. Don't cut me off to try to say that I did something. I was like, that is really... Never, I know a lot of people in the jobs does that. When you go to meetings and then you want to say something that somebody cut off, cut you off and say something. I said that's rude. That's really rude. Modesty goes a long way and you need to learn that when you're in the job. Like you go cut somebody off when they're trying to save their peace at the job. So she kind of feel like her being cut off by Torian is like a slap on her face because she can't get her stuff in and she can't be recognized but give her contributions. And some of the things that Torian said is some things that she wanted to say. But she didn't say that because he cut her off. So she kept, she felt some type of way about that. So later on, the two ladies that was close of her, because it seemed like these were the only two ladies that besides her that were working there, besides her assistant, that were working there, and um, she was talking to them and all that stuff, and they gave each other looks and about Lolly, because they kind of filling her out and see what she's about. So, but they still know she know new, and she act like she brand new. So it was like, like she better and she got this Hollywood standard so they kind of stayed off and she said he was talking to her and then they kind of come down he said you know what don't worry about Tori and Molly said it's not his thing he learned in school and everything so they kind of like break the ice and started laughing and she said she thought it was holding her 
Now Molly went to her therapist because I know she's still seeing a the therapist about things, right? And she went on and on about her job and how she felt like she left being left behind. She felt like she left the old job to go with this new job because her old job was mostly male but dominated and she felt like she'd been overlooked. But now she felt the same way here, like it's like I think that I should be saying much with the little ladies and it's not that. And then she be having my back or something like that. So she was saying on and on about a lot of things. And the therapist said, don't you think that um, instead of trying to be at the top, maybe you should try to find a way to, think, to be helpful. That's where it will get you more recognition and then and maybe it will lead you the door to better things. Instead of trying to trump more with people. Because it's not a really comp competition. Yes, I know the law firm, they give recognition to people who close most cases, who prosecute most cases, who win a lot of cases and stuff like that. But sometimes it also helps you uh, work with other lawyers to get yourself up there. Because if you knew, you don't want to step in the mayor's toes, work with them, help with them in their cases. If they met it off, they would probably think about you as a more responsible, trustworthy person. And then they could see how they can help you in the future. But if you all go in there trying to be the dog eat dog world and trying to step everybody's toes, it's not going to work that way, Molly. You can't do that. So therapist tell her that and she said well I just wanted things to know like what after Joe is I just want things the way how I wanted to go and she said hold on what Joe I said and Molly was quiet I said girl you let it slip out the tongue you said Joe name because before Molly was in her bed and you know usually Joe come over there knock her box out and then he stays the night and stuff but now she don't have that comfortable anymore she got flavor flame and flavor flame looking at her it's like uh, I'm gonna get on the bed. She said, you know you can't get on the bed. It's a <laughs> so she got on the bed, he came in there, and, but she was looking at that. So I guess her mom was still thinking about Joe. So when she said that slip of the tongue at the uh, counselor session, the lady said, hold on, hold on, who, who's Joe? And she said, oh girl, you open the can of words because I know next time you go to the therapist, she will ask you about who the hell this Joe is. Because now you're saying after Joe, you think you want things to move the way how you want to go. Not that how he wants to. So you're trying to take control of your own destiny. And so that's why you're trying to overstep things and boundaries. Continue on with Molly. So later on, I think she decided to take the therapist's advice. But she did a shady thing. Because when she was talking to the lady, she talked to them and said, you know how things are going. They said, fine. And she said, you know what? I'm trying to want to help you in things anyway that best they can with the case. Because the two ladies were talking about a case. And Molly said she want to come in and talk to them and help them. And the lady, girls was like, you know what, thank you. It's not much, but I want to help we can get. We can get everything we're doing. And it's not much, but your help is great. It's um, needed. So she was good. But at the same time she was talking to them, she was looking at the Tory office, looking down. And so Tory was talking to the boss and was looking down. And like I said, I said, what Molly going to do? What the hell Molly was going to do? Because she kept looking and focusing. And they was telling to her. But it seemed like she was not listening, but she was coming back and said, oh yeah, great, great, good. Now, later on, close to, close to the end, the two ladies said, Molly, can we work on the day tonight? Because it's some things we need to go over and we need to be fine-tuning and make sure we don't leave any holes. And Molly said, tonight, um, that's going to be hard. So the lady said, you know what, it's cool, cool. What we're going to do, what we're going to do is that, and then, through the midst that the lady was talking, Torian said, oh, um, um, Molly, are oh, you ready to work? Uh, so like that. So she, like right, she said, yeah, I'll be right there. So two lady was like, oh, okay, no, I'm not. I see that you're busy. I said, oh, Molly, you just fucked up. This we just said, you say you left your old job because people was overlooking you because you was a male predominated. Now you saw that Tori got this big ass case. If that's the case that you want. So you decide to kiss up to Torian ass and work with him so you get that big of a case. But not notice that you forgot or not notice that you made an agreement with the two girls, ladies with the firm who could have your back and helping them. But you decide to overwork both of the cases or double book whatever with the people and not even letting them know and just start working with Torian. So when they see that, it's like, okay, you just beefing about Torian, but now you're working with him. So... You flip floppy now, bitch. And that's what they're thinking. So they said, oh, cool. You busy. So I said, oh, Molly, you're going to bite you back in your ass, girl. And nobody can't save you. So now we got Issa, right? So Issa 
was told by Frida at We Got Y'all that the boss said she would put you back in the field. So Issa said, oh, okay, good. But she said, we could, uh, can we talk later at the lunch or something and then we could talk about some things. And she said, cool. So Issa went out to get some tacos. She went to get her tacos and at the midst of, she, I guess it was a phone order, at the midst of getting her tacos, Nathan, the guy that she picked up from the lift, who fought the other guy at the um, car and beat him up and ran, and people were saying that, well, hopefully that Nate the guy will come back and be kind of part of Issa's story. Which was cool. It was true. A lot of y'all was right. He did came back and it was something about the significance of him in that car and everything. Issa was looking at him and so it's like, you know what, he's going to be part of her story sometime later. And it was true. So he came and he saw her. She dropped the whole talk though. I said, damn. You were wanting that food so bad that you just dropped the shit. I know you'd be pissed off, right? <laughs> but, um... He came and they was talking and things and we found out that he from Houston, Texas and I guess he came out he said he would check out LA because he made me want to move down to LA and check out the scene and I guess one of the clients that he was working with, they canceled so he had some free time. So um, Issa and I was talking for a little bit and she didn't recognize his name. I said, I, how the hell I knew his name? His name was Nate. I said, get it together Issa. You can't forget a fine man, fine man, <laughs> fine man name like that. His name is Nathan, so she called him Nathan, uh, something, Nostrum, something like Nizo. I was like, all his names. She had the M right, but she didn't know what exactly M name there was. And he said, my name is Nathan. She said, well, I, know, I like Nordstrom better. And he said, they started laughing. And he said, what you doing? She said, I'm getting food and all that stuff. And then listen, she was getting a text by somebody named Amar. I don't know who Amar is. Y'all remind me who the hell Amar is. And, um... I guess he's put it away. And then she had another text from Frida saying at 3 o'clock we're going to talk about school assignments. And that was that. So they was talking and kind of like Nathan was giving this kind of like a fresh for Issa. Like she was into him. Like he kind of like a rebel and wanted to know things. So she was giving him a tour because he said he wanted to order things. So he ordered the food for her. And it was they said that it was going to be a phone order. So it was going to be an hour before he get his food. So he ordered his food, then he ordered what she got. And she said, show me around, something like that. Show me around. She showed the different places in LA. He's wondering what's going on. And then he said that, she asked him what he's doing, what's going on. He said, I'm just like a person who like to bounce around, who like to keep moving, moving around, to stay put in one place. So she said, you mobile? He said, yeah, I'm mobile right now. So I said, okay, that's cool. So he go around, he want to see things. and. Kind of like he made a rebel out of Issa because he kind of rebel a little bit himself and he said let's do things because they were walking and he was reminiscing about things and reminiscing about like movies and stuff and the history of LA and he was intrigued about her knowledge of it and how um, she's so excited about her city because from Texas it's different from here and she reminisced about her old neighborhood in her house. So when the midst of that they would talk about truth and dare. And you know, he used to talk about saying she wanted to do truth. So he asked her what's her last last relationship. She said her last relationship was five years and it ended because it didn't go so well. And then she realized she revealed that she cheated and it was some a lot of things that were going on that caused that friction. She messed up, she knows it's wrong and then moved on from that. Saying he said he got his own little issues too, and it's not everybody's perfect, so he understand his cool. And amidst of that, they were still talking, to talking, and then she said, "Let's see the, the old neighborhood." He said, "I dare you to show me that old neighborhood." In the midst of that, she got a text from Frida said she wanted to meet her around three and start talking about um, the school assignment. So she called Frida and told Frida that she was sick and she would see her tomorrow, so she could come in. I said, "Oh, you." You pay a hooky girl. You pay the hooky with a man that you just met. I mean, a good looking man, but you pay the hooky with a man that you just met. And I was like, oh snap. So they went to the old neighborhood. She remembered that she talked about um, her childhood, uh, uh, childhood memories of the house. And they went inside to it. He dared her to break in. And they said, damn, you damn this girl to do everything. And this Issa just doing it. I was like, Issa. Man, she just not open. You just really open, huh? Didn't get nothing. So she broke in the house, through the gate, and saw the pool because she said one of her memories was at the pool and everything. 
and I think she never got in or something about it. It was always really watchable, but she never got in the pool and stuff. So she did him to get in the pool naked. I said, "Oh, girl, you want to see his little ping ping?" I was like, "Oh, okay." And she was she didn't cover her eyes or nothing. She was just staring at him. So he said, "Oh, my God!" So he took off his clothes, all that stuff, nice little body, and got in. And then he dared her to get in. She said, uh-uh, uh-uh. He said, no, what's wrong? Is there something wrong with your hair? And he, she said, no, I'm immortalized. Everything's good. She said, well, you can get in. So she said, oh, my God, good. So she got it, and she was like, um, you take off, um, you cover your eyes, and invert your eyes somewhere else. He said, you didn't invert your eyes. She said, oh, good. Got undressed, covered herself up, went in the pool. It was so very cold. I said, how the hell you going with somebody in the pool? Y'all gonna get trouble, y'all gonna get caught the cops on, somebody gonna find y'all or try to shoot y'all or something like that. You gonna go to somebody's pool and just go in. So I said, damn, Issa, you just dropping all your inhibitions with this guy. And he started talking to more, and then she talked about she, she raps, and she still raps. And she was asking him questions about the scar and stuff like that. He didn't want to say much. She said, well, I'm telling you all my truth, and you're not saying much. So let's play the truth and harder truth. And he said, truth. She said, what's your last relationship? And he said, I had just haven't been in a little serious relationship on Lawrence so as you. But he said he did feel that he lost his house through the um, hurricane. And he said after that, instead of staying there and worked on building it, he just up and left and do it. She said, I wish I could do something like that. And he said, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do and not worry about what other people think about you. Which is true. Sometimes, sometimes you need to follow your dreams. And the dreams you need to follow, you just got to do it. Sometimes... People fear the unknown, so they won't go further in pursuing that aspect of this, and they always going for that "what if" mentality. What if this happened? What if that? What if that? And sh- sh- uh, psych themselves out in pursuing that dream, and most likely it could succeed. If it didn't succeed, not like that. But I understand how people these days like you just can't. Sometimes with um, responsibilities you have. Bills you have to pay, things you just can't just up and leave things. Like if you don't have a little support from somebody else to help you with things, get tough, get wrong, where you can't pay for things, you just can't leave things. So for him, he probably could do that because he lost everything. He had nothing to lose, so he was up to leave and do what he had to do and restart his life. So but Issa, Issa don't have no credit yet, established credit. She just got the place with the day. She just can't up and do things when she had to figure pay her bills. I and mean, yes, she not feeling so good. Um, now she not feeling her job like that, cause she told him she said she not something she wish she could do, and he said what, and he said her jobs like she not feeling as much. He said just do something about that. She said I can't. He said sometimes you just gotta do things what other people may not um, and I agree with, and do it for yourself. So I guess that's sticking east ahead, and. I say though, some people can't have the luxury. Like me, I just can't have the luxury to just go up and do something else if I want to do. Yes, I had no kids or nothing. I could do, but sometimes, like, my situation, I have to stay and do what I have to do. Some people can when they got the support for other people. So, and much that's easier for the same, easy said than done that you can say just drop and just do it and pursue your dream, it's tough sometimes. And that fear of, not knowing if you're going to succeed, not knowing if you're going to, um, the struggle, the, the consequences of just doing what you got to do, what you're going to leave behind, what you're going to be sacrificing, what struggles you might come with from, it's very really tough, it's tough to deal with. So I understand this hesitation of Issa of doing that, but I understand what, um, Nathan coming from, it's like sometimes you just got to do it. Don't think about things. They go come at the end. They go work themselves out. Just do it if you have the means to do it. That's what I say. So he took up. He saw the guy came in the house. The owner came in the house. He said, "Call the cops! Call the cops!" They ran out the there in a car. She took her. They got the food. The food was cold. Took her to his house, and they were sitting down. And he tried to play on front like the tackle was a good. And he said it was all right, but she said it's good. And then in the midst of it, because she a profit manager, she got two visits. One earlier when she went with Marty, and that somebody said it was some squirrels in the war. I said, stop freaking dumbass request is that? Squirrels in the war. And there was another one that the little boy came to the door, uh, the tenant sent the boy to the door to say that she got locked out that place. 
I say, she said, well, you changed the lock. She said, no, I didn't. She said, oh, yes, you did. Changed the lock. And they was kissing the boys on, on, on the freaking business. She said, he said, ooh, y'all do it. Y'all so eating tacos. Y'all kissing. And they said, oh, snap. <laughs> and he got, they was kissing. I said, oh, it was bound to happen. The chemistry, the tension between Issa and Nathan, it was bound to happen. So they looking at each other's eyes and they started like, kissing. And they was into it until they got a knock on the door. And she looked like she didn't want to stop. And that's when the little boy came and said about his lockout. And Nathan left, and I was good with that. So later on, Issa was at her job. Frida came in and said, "I want to talk to you about some school assignments. A school that wanted to hire you, and they needed somebody. She's cool." So Issa said, "You know what? I can't do this." She said, "What happened? Do what?" She said, "I just need something new. I need something fresh. I'm not challenged." She said, "Basically, she's unfulfilled with her job, man." She been five years and she just feel like she just can't finish. She just don't like it anymore, and she just grew out of it. So she just said, "I'm quitting." And I said, "Damn, Issa, you quit your job. So you just got to do with Lyft and the property manager. Maybe she was juggling a lot of stuff. So we said, how the hell she gonna do? We got y'all, the property management, and Lyft, and to do all that, they keep on the um, things. So maybe she could do property manager full time, do Lyft." And maybe get the other job at the beat cool because she said she wanted to do something musically with her job artistically and she just don't like the thing so we got y'all and allow her it's not allowing her to do that so maybe that program that she saw last week she would probably go there and try to get a job from there and do something that she wants to help what she passionate about which is music and artistic direction and kids so it was like that's good but she just up and quit her job i guess that's her fresh start her fresh start that she left something that had been unfulfilled for her to start something, a new journey, unknown in the future. We don't know what it is, but hopefully what Ace has done by quitting her job will free her to herself that she could do something that she loves. And hope whatever that is, hope will press for Issa because to quit your job like that, to me, like I would not equip. Uh, even though she got the property manager job, I would not quit. We got y'all until I got a secure a spot at another job that would take me then I will quit for you to quit like that to just that that I was like gosh girl cause you probably gonna need a recommendation all that stuff but that's what was just me but I was insecure that was a nice little episode again Molly I just can't deal with Molly Molly I just can't Issa it seemed like we're getting a fresh start so we could see that hopefully Issa could get her life back together and hopefully this new fling with Nathan could be a fresh little thing for her. It looked like that's cool, but we see. Hope y'all like, comment, subscribe to my channel. Also share my videos. Also hit the bell for notifications so you can be notified for all my videos that's coming out. And I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.